Hi, I'm Mariangela da Punto, and you're watching Earth from Space from the ESA Web TV Studios. Today, Copernicus Sentinel 2 takes us over Lake George in western Uganda. This equatorial lake covers an area of around 250 square kilometers and has an average depth of around 2.4 meters. Lake George is fed by a complex system of rivers and streams originating from the Ruanzori Mountains, supplying a system of permanent swamps surrounding the lake. A dense fringe of wetland grass, visible in bright green, can be seen around the edges of the lake. The wetlands provide a natural living space for a number of mammals, including elephant, hippopotamus and antelope. They also provide a habitat for over 150 species of birds, including several rare species, such as the saddlebolt stork. Given its importance as a center for biological diversity, in 1988, Lake George was designated as Uganda's first Ramsar site. The Ramsar Convention is an international treaty for the conservation and sustainable use of wetlands. Seen from above, the waters of Lake George appear green as a result of the thick concentration of blue-green algae. Metal pollution, mine seepage and agricultural runoff have caused serious pollution to the lake's waters and are severely impacting the lake's health. Lake George drains through the Kazinga Channel. This wide 32 kilometers long channel connects Lake George with Lake Edward, which lies on the border between Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Kazinga Channel flows through the Queen Elizabeth National Park. This almost 2,000 square kilometers park is known for its wildlife, including the African buffalo and the Nile crocodile. The park is also famous for its volcanic features, including volcanic cones and deep craters, which can be seen dotted around the image. Many contain crater lakes, including the Katwe Crater Lake, whose salt deposits have been mined for centuries. Sentinel-2 is a two-satellite mission to supply the coverage and data delivery needed for Europe's Copernicus program. The mission's frequent revisits over the same area and high spatial resolution allow changes in inland water bodies to be closely monitored. And this wraps up this edition. From the ESA Web TV Studios, I'm Mariangela D'Agunto. Thank you for joining.